not on hell, but on the, the, the best things of heaven, the best thing about heaven. Have your Bibles turn with us to the Gospel of John, chapter number 14. The Gospel of John, chapter number 14. And uh, I'm going to read a couple of verses. We'll have prayer first, and I'm going to read you a few verses and give you what the Lord has laid upon our hearts for today. So be much in prayer for the message this morning. John, chapter number 14. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather into the house of the Lord today. Lord, what a privilege it is. God, we've looked forward this week to being able to come back and be with your people. Lord, worship you, Lord, at the house of the Lord. Father, the difficulties of this life and, Lord, the troubles of this life sometimes seem to overwhelm. But God, I'm glad that we've got a refuge. I'm glad that we've got a place. God, I'm glad we've got a, a, a little sanctuary, Lord, at the house of God that we can gather together and for a little while get away from the cares of life, the troubles of life, the worries. And Lord, just gather around the Word of God and worship you. And God, we pray that we do that today. Help us, Lord. I'm unworthy, Father, to open the book, Lord, and read the Word of God. But Lord, I know that you're worthy. And I pray, God, you'd help us today. Forgive us of sin and failure. God, I pray that you do that which I cannot do. God, and rightly divide the word of truth. God, use us for thy glory. Move me out of the way, and I pray the Spirit of God would speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. John chapter number 14, we read words of Christ. And by way of introduction, Jesus is speaking of the promise of his return. And there's no way, of, as we've been studying in the book of Revelation, and we've been studying you know some things that are on our own there is no doubt in my mind that these words are about to come true to for the believer and he says in John chapter 14 verse number one first of all he says let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And then over in chapter, verse number 16 of, of uh, chapter 14, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Then verse number 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world uh, giveth. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Now friend we can take great comfort from these verses this morning. Knowing that no matter what is going on in the world. The Bible tells us first let not your heart be troubled. I've never seen a world in this turmoil, and neither of you. Uh, there's been some, some uh, rough times in the world before, but I don't ever remember a time in my life when I've seen this kind of turmoil in our present world. There's, you know, there's all the time you hear of terrorist conflict and terrorists killing people. And even this morning I heard about a, an act uh, in the United States, and I knew it was bound to happen sometime that a fellow walked into church and shot the pastor and killed him dead in the church and uh, gave himself up afterwards. Friend, I'm telling you, we're living in a crazy world. We're living in a crazy society. But even in the midst of all of this, God tells us in His precious Word, let not your heart be troubled. You say, preacher, how in the world when we look around, listen, get your eyes on Jesus. If you get your eyes on the world and get your eyes on politics and get your eyes set on the on the craziness and the controversies of all this world, then I'm telling you, friends, you're going to be in trouble. But if we quit looking at that and quit looking at all the things that are going on and look to the Lord Jesus Christ, then this, this Bible really takes and makes sense. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe ye also in me. And then he goes to tell us, in my Father's house, are many mansions. Look beyond this world. Look beyond everything that's going on. And look beyond to what Jesus has got for you and I when he, when he returns to receive us unto himself. He says, hey, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. 
Now, friend, that is promise. If your Bible is a red-letter edition, it is written in red, meaning that is the very words of the Lamb of God. It is the very words of Christ Himself, and He's telling us, let not your heart be troubled. He's telling us this, and because He's going away, and He's going to come again, but in the same chapter, He tells us that He's not going to leave us comfortless. Amen? I'm glad for the comfort of the Holy Spirit of God. I'm glad that He is my comfort in the time of storm. I'm I'm glad that he is my comfort in the time of distress, in the time of wars and rumors of wars, in the time of all the all the, the ungodliness that goes on in our society. I'm glad to know that I'm saved by the grace of God and he comforts me in my time, in the time I need. Comfort. I'll tell you something. If I got to looking and got to dwelling on all the evil going on in the world today, I'd get depressed. Amen. I'd get I'd get depressed and I'd get to wonder why in the world is it that we even go on? Why do we even try? But I know something, friend. I know something they don't know. Thank God I know Jesus is still in control. And the comfort of the Spirit of God will come along and tell me that everything's going to be all right. You just stay with me. You just stay with the Lord. Lord, help us that we'd stay with Jesus. We'd walk with Him. We'd look to Him. We would remember Him uh, when, uh, when the things of this life get, get rough. Many people deal with a lot of things in their life. Many Christians deal with a lot of sorrow, with a lot of uh, stress, with a lot of negativity in your life, some with even persecution. There's more Christians being persecuted today than any other time in the history of man. Uh, it is even starting in our own country. We, people, you tell people you're a Christian. You tell people that you're born again or saved by the grace of God and many folks look down their nose at you and think, well, you're some kind of nut. Amen. Call me what you may, my friend, but I'm glad I'm saved in the grace of God. I'm glad I know Him and I'm glad to be named with the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm glad to associate myself with the name of Jesus Christ and with the church of Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad. Hey, listen, the Bible says I'll not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And friend, when you get down and out and when you get in despair and when you get to feeling like the whole world's against you, remember, there's Jesus, look at Him and you will have comfort in your soul. You will have comfort in your heart. And then he goes on again to repeat what he said in, in, uh, the, in the first of the chapter. He says, peace I leave with you. Man, in this world of turmoil, isn't it great to have peace? Hey Amen. If you've got peace in your heart this morning, it's a wonderful thing to know that your peace is there because you have peace with God. And you have, because you have peace with God, you have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. So, friend, today we have peace. We have peace that passeth all understanding. My peace I give unto you. That's why you've got peace. It's because of the peace of Jesus Christ. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Amen. I'm glad, aren't you? I'm glad. I, boy, I'm telling you, the world don't give me much peace. It don't give me much hope. I can go around public and I just look at people for a while. And man, if I look at that, I'm saying, oh my, what a mess we're in. But I don't look at that. And if I do, I say, Lord, I'm glad I know you. I'm glad I'm part of the family of God. I'm glad my name's written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm glad because of that, and I know that in my heart. I feel that in my soul. I've got peace with God. Oh, my friend, in these days that we live in, it's a wonderful thing to know that, we've got, that you've got that peace in your heart. If you don't, hey amen, there's one way to do it. If you don't have the, the peace with God, you need to get saved by the grace of God. And if you don't have the peace of God in your heart, then you need... Uh, to uh, make things right with the Lord and say, Lord, I know that you're my Savior and Lord, I want that, that uh, to experience again that wonderful peace of God that passeth all understanding. So we have the peace of God. Then he says, again, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In these last days of time, my friend, the world is getting fearful. It is a fearful place. We don't know what's going to happen next. But you know what? I don't live in fear. I lay down at night and I go to sleep. No matter what's going on, I lay down at night and go to sleep knowing that I'm in the hands of the Lord. Amen? I don't go to sleep in fear of what tomorrow's going to bring because I know who holds tomorrow. So we don't live in fear. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And friend, I know people that, you know, they get all upset and they get all fearful and they get worried about 
what's going to happen next in this world? Where is the next terrorist attack going to take? Is it going to take where, you know, who's going to let off the first nuclear bomb? There's no use worrying about that, friend. We can't do, what can you do about it? <coughs> you can't do nothing about it. Fear not. I am with thee. Be not afraid. I am thy God. We trust in the word of God and we know that Jesus went away. He said, if I go, he said, I, I'm going to come back and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. So that is my introduction this morning. Let me give you a few thoughts about this. What, what is the best thing about heaven? Now, we established if you know the Lord, you're going there. And uh, it may be sooner than we think. We believe that Jesus is coming back. We ought to live like Jesus is coming back. Amen? And so we know that He's coming back. And so we see that the best thing about heaven when we get there, what's it going to be? What's going to be the best thing about heaven when you get there? I've heard all descriptions of heaven and I've, you know what we can learn about it in the Word of God. And all these things are great and marvelous things that one day you and I are going to look on. But is the best thing of heaven, is it going to be the very throne of heaven? That's going to be good. We've been studying in the book of Revelation and I can picture with John that throne set in heaven and boy, what a marvelous, what a magnificent sight John must have seen when he saw that throne set in heaven. That must be a beautiful sight. Now I can go there, I can enter boldly before the throne of grace and I believe that's where I'm going when I go to the Lord in prayer. I can go boldly before the throne of grace and that's a wonderful thing. But is that going to be the best that heaven has to offer for me and heaven has to offer? Is that throne, it's beautiful and I don't want to downgrade or I don't want to uh, you know, limit the, the, the magnificence of that throne set in heaven but is that the, will it be the throne of heaven that is the best thing about heaven? Will it be the rainbow of heaven? We begin studying and see that rainbow that encircles that throne and that emerald rainbow. I mean, I've thought a lot about that. That must be a beautiful sight. We can see a rainbow around here and we, everybody stops and oh, huh. if you see two at one time, oh, you know, and it's beautiful. And I don't, I don't want for one minute, I don't want to, uh, uh, think that I'm not appreciative of that and don't think it's beautiful. But can you imagine a rainbow that is totally emerald green? Boy, isn't that beautiful? I've never seen that before. One day I'm going to see that around the throne of God. But is that the best thing that heaven, that, that we'll see in heaven? Is that the, it's marvelous, friend. It's wonderful. But is that the best thing of heaven? Will it be the crystal sea of heaven that's there like glass? Oh, what a beautiful sight that must be, that crystal sea. I'm going to see that one of these days. That's going to be a marvelous sight. That's going to be a magnificent sight. But will that be the best that heaven has to offer? Will it be the mansions of heaven? He said, I go and prepare a place for you. And my father's house are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you. I can't imagine what those mansions must look like. I imagine they'll probably make the Biltmore house look like, look like a little doll house compared to what God's created for me. That's man-made. And it's been millions and millions of dollars that it's worth. But I'll tell you something, there's no price on my mansion in heaven, amen. I can't buy that. I can't, I, there's no way I can receive that except I'm born again by the grace of God. And because I'm born again in the grace of God, guess what? It's free. It don't cost me a dime. Most everybody's paying a mortgage and you've got it paid off and you've got the, you've got the results of that mortgage. But I'll tell you something, when I get to heaven, it's already paid for all in full. And I get to enjoy it with it. And the, and the deed, amen, is already in my name. Amen. Well, that's going to be a wonderful thing, ain't it? I live in a little house in Swanano that, you know, that we raised three kids in. People say, well, how in the world did you raise three kids in that house? Hey, man, we was close together, I'll just tell you that. If one got ill, about everybody got ill. They all run off your room and hide because there just wasn't a whole lot of room to run off and hide. But guess what? We, were, we did it by the grace of God and God helped us. And you know what, friend? I wouldn't trade it for nothing. But one of these days I'm going to heaven to have all the room I could possibly ever want anything I need. Boy, that's going to be a wonderful thing to have that mansion in heaven. And that place that Jesus is going to prepare is even better than that mansion. Whatever it must be, man, that's going to be a wonderful thing, isn't it? Now, friend, if you're a born-again believer, I'm not talking of things that, that, that may be a fairy tale. It's not. It's real. I'm going to heaven. There's a place prepared for me. I have a mansion that was, that was spoken 
by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He's prepared it, made it for me. Man, what a place it must be, heaven. I'm going there. Hey, man, I'm going there. Hey, are you going there? I'm going there. I'm going hunting next week. Man, I'm excited. I want to kill something. I feel like I need to kill something. <laughs> that sounded bad, didn't it? I'm talking about deer hunting, okay? And that, but, but guess what? There is nothing compared. We ought to be more excited about going to heaven than we are anything else in life. We ought to be more excited about the Braves winning, the, about, Jesus, about going to heaven than the Braves winning the ball game. Or Carolina beat you. We ought to be more excited than that, friend. Because we're going to a place, amen, that'll never grow old. We're going to a place where it ain't going to need no repairs. Don't have to put on a new roof. Don't have to put on a new siding. Don't have to do nothing to it. It's a mansion that's given to me by the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. He's made a place for me and hallelujah, I'm going there one day and one day soon I'm going to heaven. What a day that will be when my Jesus... I, hey, I'll tell you something. I'm going to heaven when I die. Where are you going? Where are you going when you die? You're going to heaven. You ought to be excited about it if you're going to heaven. What if the rapture takes place today? Boy, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? I'm going to heaven to be with the Lord. And I'm going to see my mansion. Boy, that's, that's a good thought, isn't it? The throne of God, the rainbow, that mansion that he's... Uh, uh, made for us and the place he's prepared for us the crystal sea and then guess what when I walk down those streets it's going to be a street of gold transparent gold pure gold not 99.99999% that we get but it's going to be 100% the purest of gold and the pure gold is clear the tin of gold is that it, it is because it still has some impurity in it but guess what I'm going to a place that is pure gold. Walk on that street. The Bible says there's a street of gold, not streets, there's a street of gold. And I'm going to get, that one street's going to take me everywhere I want to go. Now we all wear a little gold on our hands or in our ears or nose or someplace most people wear a little gold. But guess what? I'm going to a place where the street is not paved with gold, but it is gold. Think about that. We value that a lot. Man, that's going to be wonderful to see it, that street of gold. Can you imagine walking down a street of gold? You say, well, get it dirty. No, there ain't no dirt in heaven. You can't get it dirty. We'll walk on that street of gold. Well, a preacher, it'll wear down. No, it's pure gold. It ain't going to wear down. Why? Because it's perfect. Because it's heaven. And I'm going there. Amen. I'm going there. I'm going to that place. Boy, that's going to be a wonderful sight. Are you kind of getting a little picture with me where we're going when we leave this world? Is that the best of heaven? Or is it the gates of pearl? I can't imagine a pearl big enough to make a gate out of. But neither could I imagine a fish big enough to swallow Jonah. One preacher was asked, Now, a preacher, a skeptic, of course. Now, a preacher, where in the world are they going to get a where, where in the world is God going to get a pearl big enough to make a gate out of? That preacher was quick. I ain't that quick. He looked at that person and said, the same place, the same hole of water he got the whale out of to swallow Jonah. He says there's a, there's a clam in there big enough to make a, a pearl big enough to make a gate out of. Hey, it's God. He can do anything he wants to do. But can you imagine a gate of pearl? Man, that's going to be a sight to see. That's going to be a sight to see. What about the walls of Jasper? Can't imagine that. But I'm going to see that. My eyes. You know why? You know what? We can we can handle that now. In our earthly bodies, there's no way I can handle a sight like that. I'd disintegrate. But guess what? I'm also going to have a glorified body. And I'm going to be able to take all that in when I get the glory. Man, that's a wonderful thing. I, makes me just want to makes me just want to go on home. Amen. Makes me want to just just take off home. But they, hey, there's work to be done before we leave. Jesus may come today and we'll see all that. We'll enjoy all that. But is that the best of heaven has got to offer? I say, friend, as wonderful that is, it's not the best that heaven has to offer. It's not the most beautiful thing that heaven has to offer. In all its beauty, it's not the best thing of heaven. The best thing about heaven is in a person, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we see in Revelation chapter number 4, verse number 2 and 3, we read this, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Hey, it ain't the throne, friend, that has so much appeal. It's the one that's sitting on that throne. It is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he says, 
And he said, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. The focus here, friend, is not on the throne. It's not on the rainbow, but it's on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is what to look at in heaven. He is the most exciting thing about heaven. He is the best thing about heaven. And we read, we read other things in the Bible about him. We read that he is the almighty God. Amen. My Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ gave his life for me and went to sit on the right hand of the Son of, uh, of the Father and there he sits today making intercession for you and I. God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are all one and they are all the Almighty and Jesus is the Almighty. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He always has been. He always will be. Amen. And he's not going to give up on me now. Hallelujah to God. I'm glad who he is. He is the supreme thought of heaven. He is the most wonderful thing about heaven is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my advocate that makes that today he's making intercession for me. When I go wrong, when I mess up, when I fail, when the devil's all over my case, there's the Lord Jesus Christ, my lawyer. He's my go-between. He's my advocate and he's making intercession for me to the Father. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I've got such a man as him. I'm glad that I've got such an advocate as the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my shepherd, amen. When I want to be led of God, if I look to the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, he leadeth me, amen, in the paths that I should go. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake if I'll just follow the shepherd. Now, friend, I want to tell you something. If you want to go out on your own, go out on your own but you're following somebody else other than the shepherd. If you want to live right and do right and serve God, then you need to follow the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the supreme being of heaven. He is what I long to see when I get there is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He's my counselor. When I need counsel, it's him. Isaiah tells us he's wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. And friend, I'll tell you, in this world we need counsel and we need it sometimes I can't get it from anybody else and sometimes if it if it's from them it ain't no good but I've never received bad counsel from the Father amen Jesus Christ always gives good counsel I've been you know I've been counseled by people before that I needed help and I go to them just didn't make me happy just didn't satisfy me but if I get along with God and get on my face before God and say Lord I need your help God, I need something. Jesus, will you, will you help me today? He's never failed to give me good counsel. If I'll just follow that spirit, the spirit that the comfort. If I'll just follow that spirit, and friend, I'm telling you, I'll have great counsel from the Lord. He's my counselor. He's my Emmanuel. He's my God with us. Emmanuel means God with us. Friend, I walk every day, and guess who's with me? It's Jesus, amen. He's my Emmanuel. He's... He's my high priest that I can go before. Go before and, 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 and plead with the high priest of God. It's him. He's the king of kings. The Lord of lords. He's the mighty God. He's my redeemer. That bought me off the slave block of sin. Last of all, he's my sacrificial lamb. John saw him and said, The next day John seeth Jesus coming into him. And as John was, as John was standing there baptizing in the river Jordan, he saw, he saw Jesus coming to him. And I can imagine John looking there and seeing Jesus coming to him. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Amen. With great excitement, with great enthusiasm, he saw Jesus as the Lamb of God. And he didn't just see him as that. He saw him as the sacrificial Lamb of God because he knew the Old Testament Scriptures in which it promised that a lamb would come. It promised that a sacrifice would be made. And John saw him coming and he's looking down over the way and he says, there he is. There's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He is my Lamb, my friend. He is 
is the one that died for me. He is the one that paid my sin debt. He is the one that hung on the cross of Calvary and was beaten beyond recognition. He is the one that shed his blood for me. He is my lamb. Hallelujah. He is your lamb. He is the one, my sacrifice. He is my, my that he was the one that forgave my sins, that paid my debt, that bore my sins, that received the punishment that I should have received. It should have been me that was that was beaten. It should have been me that was crucified. But guess what? I have a lamb. Thank God. There's a lamb that, that went to the cross. He said, I'll take it all for him. I'll take it all for Gary. I'll take it all for Max. I'll take it all for these people that sat in Gabriel's Creek this morning. Why? Because he said, I love them. I love them. And when he hung on the cross of Calvary and stretched out his arms when he said, when he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's the love of Christ, amen, that made him such a special lamb. My sacrifice paid my sin debt, paid a debt that I could not pay. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. He paid a, paid a debt, amen, that he did not owe. He received the punishment that I should have received. He shed his blood for me. And guess what? He is also that lamb of God. That precious Lamb of God that's sitting on the right hand of the Father. I believe that just any, the Father only knows when He's coming back. Remember that? I believe He's sitting, waiting for the Father to say, Son, this thing is over with. Man has done what they do. The last one has been saved. The body of Christ has been completed. And, and, the, and the bride of Christ is made up. And He's going to turn. And he's going to turn and look at... The, the Son of God sitting on His right side and He's going to say, Son, go get your bride. Hallelujah to God. And guess what? In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you and I are going to be changed to be just like Him. Amen. We're going to, we're going to be changed and we're going to heaven. We're going to glory to be with Him. What a day that's going to be. That's the best thing of heaven is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, it just don't get no better. And guess what? I'm, you know, some of y'all looking at me like, preacher, are you nuts? No, I'm not nuts. I'm telling you, amen. I'm telling you what heaven is and what the supreme thing of heaven, what the blessing of heaven is going to be is Jesus. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Amen. It's Jesus, my friend. You're saved by the grace of God. He's your way to heaven. And when we get to heaven and all the beautiful things that we're going to behold, all the things that we're going to see, what we're going to focus on most, and what I want to see most is the Lord Jesus Christ that bore my sins on Calvary, that remain with Him today, the marks of the cross, and I'm going to see Him, and I'm going to, oh my goodness, I'm going to get to bow at His feet and worship Him for as long as I want to worship Him. Amen. For doing for me what He did. All the time, friend, there's going to be people that are going to die and go to hell without God and they're not going to experience this. The first thing they're going to feel when they get to heaven is or get to hell is terrible torment and terrible pain and terrible suffering. And they'll be there with the demons of hell, the devil and the false prophet and the beast for all eternity. But friend, I'm glad I'm going to heaven. I'm glad I made that choice one day that I wanted to be saved by the grace of God. And I said yes to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Father. We thank you for the word of God this morning. Lord, I thank you to know that one day I'm coming home. Father, one day I'm coming to be with you. And I pray, God, this morning, if there's someone here that don't know you, is not sure of that, touch their heart, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. I don't know, there might be someone here this morning say, Preacher, I'm not going to heaven when I leave this world. I, I'm not going to heaven. And if I die right now, it's not going to be heaven that I go to, but I'm going to hell. Would you pray for me? And I'll pray for you. I'll not come and embarrass you. But I want to pray for someone to lift your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. We'll get to church to pray for you. Is there someone to say, Preacher, pray for me? I don't want to go to hell. The last place you ever want to go, friend, is hell. The last place you ever want to spend eternity is hell. You want to go to heaven when you die. You want to go to where... Jesus is at when you die, where you'll live in peace and, and glory and have, have all the comforts of heaven for all time and eternity. What a place that's going to be. The new, the new heaven, the new earth, the new city, Jerusalem, all that's for the believer. But for the lost man, it's dying and going to hell in eternal punishment and tor turmoil where the, where the worm dieth not and where there's eternal flame. I wonder if there's someone say, Preacher, I don't want to go there. Would you pray for me? I will wait just a moment. Right, I wonder if there's a believer here this morning. Say, preacher, 
I know I'm on my way to heaven, but sometimes I get my eyes off of that fact and I, I worry and I'm concerned about what's going on in the world and I want, I want to just get closer to the Lord, but that don't bother me no more. Would you lift your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me? All over the building. Oh, my friend, keep your eyes fixed on Him. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. You see if it don't let make life better. Father, we thank you, God, again this morning. God, for these hands that were raised, God, I pray that you'd help us to keep our eyes fixed on thee. Lord, not on the turmoil of this world, not on the things of this world, but God, on the Lamb of God. Lord, let us center our thoughts on thee. And God, we'll thank you. Encourage our hearts in the word of God. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Lord, bless the remainder of this service to thy glory. In thy name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate your attention this morning. Appreciate the help of God. Are you glad you're going to heaven? Say amen.